and now let's discuss how we could change this text that is returned from the large text component here in this return statement. For that, we could utilize React props. Let me show you how to do that. Here in the large text, same as in the HTML text, we could add attributes. And for example, here we could add attribute and let's call it text. And let's set its value to string some other text, like that. Don't forget to add closing double quote. Nothing was changed here on the web page, and I still see some text that is returned by large text component here on this line. But now let me add parameter to this arrow function, and let's call it props, like this. And now here, before return statement, let's simply print to the console value of the props variable, like that, inside of this arrow function. And now you could open up console by clicking on the console here in the right section, and at the end of the output, you'll see such object with single key text and its value is some other text. And this line definitely comes from this console log statement, where we print to the console value of the props variable. And props is parameter in this arrow function. And actually props are properties of this particular React functional component. And this object is very similar to what we pass here. We added here a single attribute text with value some other text. Let me modify it, for example, to some other text with exclamation mark. And immediately I'll see that this object will be locked again to the console. And it means that any time when property of specific component, in our example large text component, changes, component is re-rendered, and this function is executed once again, and view in the web browser is refreshed. So it's rule, any time when properties of particular component change, component is re-rendered, and in terms of JavaScript it means that this function is executed by React again. Let's try to modify this value once again, add one more exclamation mark. And again, I see this line of text here in the console. And it means that this component was re-rendered again. Let's add the one more property here. And let's name it, for example, text2. And let's set its value to ABC. Now, here in this object, I'll see two keys, text and text2. And now inside of this props object, it is actually an object, there are two keys. And you could extract particular keys from the object in JavaScript using the structuring syntax. And for that you need to add a line like this, const, next will be a pair of curly braces, and inside let's write two variables, text and text2, like that. Here will be equal sign, and on the right will be name of the variable we want to destructure from, it is props. And now text and text to variables should contain corresponding keys from the props object. And I could log text and text to here, let's do that like that, text, let's copy this line and paste it here, and uh, here let's log text to like that. And now I see some other text as a result of this console log statement and ABC as a result of this second console log statement. That's how you could destructure particular properties from the props parameter inside of this functional component. And basically you could do that directly here, instead of using this separate line of code. We could take this part from here, remove this line of code like that, and instead of props, insert here this object. It is not an object, it is actually destructuring syntax. Let's save changes. And now I see here same result, some other text and ABC. Wonderful. Now let's actually get rid of text too, we don't need it for this particular large text component like that. And let's keep only text and let's remove text to attribute here. It means that using JSX attributes, you could pass particular properties to the components. And in this example, we pass property called text with such value to the component large text. And here, using such syntax, 
sorry I forgot to remove this line. And here in the large text component we use the structuring syntax in order to pull out particular key from the probes object. And here we define a new variable text directly here in the parameter section. And now inside of this functional component we could use this variable anywhere 